and do things that a lot of people say that they would never do. Uh, doctors have said that Terrell would never do anything. He would be like a vegetable. First thing he did was eat. As you're not supposed to, don't expect to. Uh, this is as good as it gets. Um, you can't. And so the greater challenge oftentimes is just a mindset. And so whenever you hear those kinds of things, it lends itself to the overall decline of someone's health. We call it declinism or declinist mindset. He's talking. He's half dressing himself. He can brush his teeth. All these things that they said he couldn't do is all reachable, and he is doing it now. How amazing is that, you know? And now Terrell can speak sentences and hold conversation. But once again, our son could not talk from the day he got hurt until Jennifer came into his life. And it took 17 years for my son to start talking again and for himself to hear his own voice once again. It was just so rewarding just to see his like small accomplishments, his large accomplishments, to, to be a part of what I consider a miracle, you know, for someone who hasn't spoken in 17 years and, you know, someone who fought for his life after his injury and the doctors told his parents he would never walk or talk again and to be witness to him speaking his first words and to see the look on his dad's face and watching the tears come out of his eyes as he's sitting there listening to his son speak his first words in 17 years. I mean, it's, it was nothing short of a miracle. And to be a part of that, oh, God, there's just no words to describe it. Uh, the main uh, objective is to provide training consulting to families, caregivers, and um, anyone else who uh, may be involved in someone's care to equip and um, give them capacity to change and to promote well-being for, the, for their loved ones. And it's more than just providing physical therapy. It's about circling around them with resources and tools to create a higher level of engagement. And so we just have to be able to think out the box and be a little more creative of how we want to deliver services, opportunities for uh, direct support staff to develop their skills, to be able to be more, um, to participate more in the uh, skills that, um, that we provide. One of the limitations that I deal with on a regular basis is funding restraints. The limitation in terms of resources. Even if we wanted to, which we would want to, we would not be able to afford the amount of physical therapists to be able to work with our individuals. The model works so incredibly well because what it has is a practitioner, a physical therapy practitioner, being the person who is driving the whole um, system, driving the intervention, the direct support professional, who really is very motivated to be able to follow through a prescriptive program to be able to have that individual really maximize their level of, of movement. You know, it's just like all of us working together and then George, you know, the physical therapist working with him and getting to take those steps and getting him standing up out of his wheelchair. I mean, that's stuff that his parents were told was never going to happen. It's the parents, the care providers, the professionals, the therapists, the one-on-ones, the people in the community, we all play an intimate part of this. Always believe. Praise God. Amen.